So I'm in New York City, and I was the guest speaker for a church that will remain nameless, but the situation will be quite familiar. Uh, I was picked up by the deacon and dropped off in the lobby. He said that an elder would come and get me. And so as I was standing there, I was enjoying my anonymity for a while because I like to get to churches early and perhaps not be known so I can see what's really going on. I remember that a young lady, probably in her late 30s, came up the stairs into the lobby and walked towards the door. An usher met her there and then said this, and I'll never forget it, said, what are you doing here? We haven't seen you in years. I'm glad you finally made it back. I could tell by the look on the lady's face, the young lady's face, um, she was quite embarrassed because there were people in the lobby and she didn't know who I was and I was standing right there. It was interesting that uh, the usher then turns to her and said, well, you're back, but I hope you don't quit on us again. And I said to myself, what a terrible situation for this young lady who's trying to make it back, who's trying to come back to church. I could tell from the context that this young lady had not been there for a long time. The look on her face was one of embarrassment and she sheepishly went in to the sanctuary after the usher had finished welcoming her back. I, I looked at this and I remembered saying to myself, maybe this is an anomaly, but I could tell that this was not an anomaly, but it was actually a sample, an example, if you will, of the congregation's culture towards people who they did not know or whom they have not seen for a long time. I was a guest, and it was interesting that it was evangelism day where they were preparing for an evangelistic effort, but no one really spoke to me until I mounted the pulpit and they realized I was the one who was speaking. It was irresistibly ironic that on the day they were pushing for evangelism, they didn't know what to do with an old member who was returning, and they couldn't even welcome their guest speaker. So one of the things that we need to think about as church leaders, as pastors, as church board members, when we talk about reconnecting people, is that we are not reconnecting names on a list, but we actually are reconnecting people to a community. One of the things that I saw in that church in New York that I see in many, many of our congregations is that sometimes we have great strategies and even sometimes great ideas of practices to reconnect people, but we have to understand that we're not reconnecting numbers, we're reconnecting people. And that means that there must be a love, there must be an empathy, there has to be a feeling on both sides, both the church and the person who we're trying to reconnect with, that we want them to be part of us. See, what the usher didn't realize is that when she said this loud, when she said, what are you doing here? Uh, we haven't seen you in such a long time. It could seem like she was perhaps just a, a underdeveloped usher or maybe she didn't have quite a good filter, but what it really betrayed was this value of the congregation that people only matter if they're present or if they're giving or if they're participating. And one of the great principles you're gonna learn in this resource is that people matter far more than just what they give or what they can contribute to the community, but people matter. I, I remember when I first started my ministry in Brunswick, Georgia, right after seminary, uh, in those days, they used to measure the church's ability to give to conference-wide development, whether it be uh, in-gathering or any other goals that you had, based on your membership number. I was only pastoring 25 people actively in that congregation, but on the list were 70 members. And so I came up with the idea that we needed to purge the membership list so that I didn't have to pay the conference as much as we were paying. We were, being, uh, we were being asked to pay based on 70 people when we only had 25. 
And I remember when I met with my leaders to talk about kind of purging the list, I was really telling them we need to do it so we can save money. They fought me on it. They pushed back. They said, no, pastor, we don't want to diminish our membership list because we'll be embarrassed because it will look like we're losing members. So think of it. We're having this conversation about people who are not connected to our church. I was thinking about the money we could save. They were thinking about the face they would save by keeping the names. We were both wrong because we were not thinking about the people, valuing them as precious souls that needed to be reconnected with the community. Now, let's be clear. We know that people have personal relationship with God. We know that a person can pray and worship at home and, and they, can, uh, they can be able to have relationship with the divine all by themselves. But there is a reason why we want to reconnect with them because every believer grows best in community. It's okay to read your Bible by yourself, to pray by yourself. In fact, we want people to do that, but there's something that is so intangibly valuable by having people in the community. And this is why we wanna make sure that every member that, that we haven't seen for a while is contacted. We wanna make sure that Every time uh, we, we see that people have been missing for a while, that we reach out to them, not to ask them where they've been, avoid trying to shame them into uh, coming back, because shame or fear is never a sustainable reason for worship. We want to show them that we miss them because we love them. Reconnection is about relationship, not simply membership. So if we were to use the parable that was used in the beginning of this resource, it takes me back to a time when I was driving in an unfamiliar place. I was trying to make a left to uh, go onto the on-ramp of a highway, but the exiting ramp was right beside it. It was parallel. And because it was dark, I couldn't tell which was what. So I actually made a left into the wrong ramp. And I, thank God, realized it right away because a car was coming up and I saw the headlights. And if I did not get out of the way, we would have had a head-on collision. How many times has that happened in the church when people are trying to take a ramp to come in and we're on the same ramp going the wrong way? It's because sometimes we value policies or procedures more than people. So as we think about reconnecting with people. We need to think about avoiding shame and fear and the element of surprise or, or, or making people feel guilty for not being connected. After all, what is the real virtue that wins people to Jesus? What's the real virtue of reconnecting people to God's community? It's love. And so I hope as you read this resource and as you go through this chapter, you'll see all of the things that we need to avoid so that we don't become the obstacle for people taking the ramp to reconnect with the church. I'm looking forward to what God is going to do for us as we use this resource. I so thoroughly enjoyed that presentation on chapter two, avoid. Let me ask you, what are some of the things that we need to cut in order to be able to connect? Think about those as you go to the end of chapter two and answer the questions.